You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Oz Avnea from the band Obsidian Tide. Their album Pillars of Creation came out in August of 2019. And if you haven't listened to it yet, you really need to. Oz, thank you for taking time to talk to me. Hi there. Thank you for you know finding the time and having me. It's good to be here. Of course, of course. So uh, I like to begin with people's origin stories. So let's just kind of go into you since I'm talking to you. I mean, how do you remember falling in love with music? Oh, wow. The truth is, I was actually, uh, you know, thinking you'd ask a different question, but I'm really happy you asked this one because it's different and I really, really like it. So, you know, it all started when I was like a kiddo, around uh, eight, nine. I remember my father, you know, opening, uh, you know, the, mach- the music machine at our home. And putting in like music in the veins of uh, Bee Gees and Rod Stewart and all this kind of uh, mainstream stuff. And at the end of the day, you know, it made me understand that music is a thing. And later on when I developed, I kind of wanted to uh, start and uh, play an instrument. The first one I really wanted to was violin. But uh, at the end of the day, it, it didn't really happen. And then I was actually started to delve a bit about music a bit more, and I found guitar. And, you know, I listened to a lot, a lot of stuff that made me connect in a much more, uh, you know, firm and, uh, you know, serious way to music. And, you know, it all came to the point where, you know, I just felt it, you know, feelings and emotions as music in general is definitely something that speaks to me so it all connected very beautifully and uh, when i started to hear music more seriously it connected and clicked uh so uh now that you've uh, been a musician for a while is there any inkling that maybe you'll pick up a violin again try to track it down i mean and now it's hard to find a good violin nowadays but uh <laughs> yeah well I, to be honest i thought about it but it, it's not look like it's gonna happen i also thought about the uh, cello or stuff because you know i'm so heavily involved with guitars for the past 16 years but uh i don't know maybe we'll, we'll have to see yeah cello is a really cool one I th- i've always thought about that too because it kind of has the sound of a distorted guitar yeah and, and it's so heavy as far as it comes to you with the with the sound it transcribed you know it, it's really heavy it gives a nice belly to the to the sound and tune and i, I really like it so definitely uh, so now so more on to the band and everything. How do you remember meeting everybody in the band and everything just kind of beginning that way? Wow. Um, it was actually back in 2012, you know, where I actually had some sort of song structure already, you know, ready. And I felt like it's time for me to actually do something with it and have a bit of like band formation, if you know what I what I mean. And what I did, I actually went online to one of our, um, you know, forums, metal forums here in Israel. And I published, um, you know, an ad about me having, you know, some, an idea for a project and I'm looking for uh, players. And then not long after, I actually saw Erez, our drummer, ad. He actually posted an ad for him side, side, side that he's looking for, you know, players from his, um, his area to come and play together. So uh, what happened is I contacted Ares and I actually spoke with him about the idea, about the material. Um, he came to my flat, he listened to the demos. Um, we started to rehearse, you know, as a duo uh, for the first couple of months. And after that, you know, we came to the conclusion we need a bass player, we need bass. It's, it's can't really, it can't really stay just guitar and drums. And then I actually spoke to Shahar our bass player, and about the band. And he also came to my flat and I let him listen to the entire, uh, you know, strong structures. And, you know, quickly after, it let you how to come to a rehearsal and uh, the rest is history. So it was kind of one of those, like, um, made to be kind of a things where you guys started to vibe right away about, like, different influences and, like, what you... Did you guys all kind of have share like a vision of what you saw for the band? Um, at the very beginning, you know, it just, it was very, um, it flowed, you know, it was very, very, 
natural. It felt natural as far as it comes to the way we work and the way we talk about it. Um, as far as it comes, you know, to the early stage, you know, we actually released an EP in 2015, which I wrote mostly. And, you know, they just came in and play their parts, you know, contributed, contributed the finish touches to it. And then, you know, as we grew together after, we actually became much more, you know, uh, entwined as far as it comes to, you know, our visions and the music we like. And, you know, everyone started to actually influence the other with music he likes and he listens to and the ideas and this kind of stuff. Well, that leads me straight into influences. We got to talk about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, man. So... What, what, what kind of influences do you guys all bring to the package, do you think? Um, as far as it comes to, you know, um, music and bands like, we do have a couple of bands we we all really, really like, bands like, um, you know, Opeth and uh, Between the Buried and Me and uh, Mastodon. You know, these kind, of, uh, these kind of bands are really, really, you know, we all like. Um, as far as it comes, you know, to... Because you know it's so wide, and you know it's it's a bit indi individual. You know I revolve around pretty much everything, which is uh, proggy, proggy like, heavy and technical, and atmospheric stuff. And you know Eras on his side individually is more into old school and jazzy stuff like uh, Camo and uh, you know uh, Jimi Hendrix and uh, Shachar is all around you know uh, prog of all kinds of prog. You know he listens to bands like. Uh, King Crimson, all the way up to, you know, Leprous and uh, uh, Black Horn Initiate even. So, you know, it's all a mixture of stuff and uh, that's how it is, like, musically. Wow. Yeah. wow. So it's pretty diverse in itself right there. Yeah. So you guys kind of, like, reach out to all these different places. And is it cool when you, like, finally get a chance to, like, jam together and everything like that just 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 hear where people will take different ideas when you throw an idea out there where somebody grabs it and t goes their own way with it is that like, always exciting as far as it comes to the music and the writing process yeah and oh. everything like that yeah Alrighty. so you know basically um up until now what happened is that either myself or shahar we actually uh, brought some sort of a backbone you know backbone material of song structure or so and what is happening is we get into the rehearsal room and, you know, we actually start to work on it. And the idea is, you know, to develop it. And that's in this specific moment is definitely where, you know, all the type, all the different type of, um, how to say, influence, musical influence come in. Because suddenly you can literally hear a bit of a, you know, laid back, you know, uh, jazzy kind of, of, of uh, approach and then it can be very very atmospheric as far as it comes you know to the guitars and the way it traps everything up or on the other way it can be very very proggy so we go over the backbone and we develop it some by the way some sessions can get like really really uh, intense i would say sometimes because we we are you know we're very very, very invested in what we think and what we want to do and uh we could literally talk about a single a note or chord progression uh, for 20 minutes or so, it literally happened. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's that's our songwriting process in, in a very, very basic uh, approach. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so with this album, you guys were all, this is a concept album, Pillars of Creation. Uh, can yeah. you go into just kind of like the lyrics? The, uh, not, I mean, you don't have to, give us any spoilers but uh, just a bit of the story and what sure all that was like sure sure well you know the idea is that at first we didn't really think we're gonna make a concept or so but we started to write songs and we started to work on the songs and all of a sudden it became like one one whole approach so we thought it would be very very cool um Pillars of Creation is a concept album. You have a protagonist, a hero, obviously, that is going through some sort of a journey. And, you know, it's discovery, it's enlightenment about certain things and aspect, it's uh, truth, you know, learning about truths and, and you know, ideals. And, uh, you know, as long as the story goes, obviously, um, you see more and more progress with what he see and what he actually think about stuff and what he tells you about. 
um, you know, obviously the first song and the last song, you know, the, the first is opening, the last one is closing. It makes it very, very, you know, comfortable. It makes it very, very um, comfortable as far as it comes to, to the feeling, in my opinion. And um, that's pretty much it. Huh. So how did you guys like to approach the lyrics for this one? Well, um, the lyric kind of uh, approach and the lyric job is mostly Shahar's part. You know, he's actually he's the one who's involved mostly about the lyrics. I can tell you that um, two, two of the songs in the album are actually, you know, are inspired. They're inspired, you know, about um, about stuff that came from a book. I don't know if you heard about it called The Name of the Wind of Patrick Rutfuss. You okay. heard it? I haven't. All righty. So basically it's a, it's a fantasy uh, book that actually talks about a fantasy world and he talks a lot about uh, you know different type of stuff there and Jahar and Erz are a big big fans so two songs there are actually you know two inspiration from this uh, imaginary um, poetry while others you know actually talk about more contemporary and more direct um, you know dealings you know, we have one song who actually talks about you know um, losing you know, a home or a place or a feeling, you know, and launching to this feeling or home without having the ability to come back to it. Um, and the other actually um, talking about, uh, you know, the way of someone and the way of a person to fall into drugs and get like very, very around it and about what happens from it and so on and so forth. So um, it's, it really talks about, you know, this kind of stuff and try to incorporate them both at the same time. Wow. So uh, what I noticed when I was listening through the album was all of these uh, other instruments that you guys would bring in. And it seemed like these other instruments, whether it was a violin or a flute or a saxophone, here in these different places of the music, it was used so tastefully. And I thought that was because maybe you guys were using that instrument as a part of the story as well. Was that sort of a part of the plan? Um, when I think about it right now, you know, we it, it's almost always going with, with what we think uh, would fit uh, to the song the best way. What what is what would sound cool, and of course, what would, what would give the certain feeling we wanted. For example, you know, um, um, the the flute. You know, it has very very uh, very very kind of like. Uh, 100% into and, and presence in songs like Seven, you know, and also songs yeah. like Unanimous. And to be honest, it just, we felt it, it, uh, it affects and, and supports what we wanted to transcribe and what we wanted to show in, in the music. So yeah, definitely. And bringing in the guest musicians and everything, I really, I really like to see that because it shows that you guys aren't like afraid to push yourselves into places that might be unfamiliar or anything like that is so what's that like bringing in these guest musicians is it mostly like prepared material that they're playing for you or do you have moments where like you kind of say like just try to like improvise over this part and kind of things like that well first of all of course you know when it comes to actually progressive music or progressive music as a whole in my opinion in my personal opinion there are no rules like you know i think that Progressive music can be both guitars and violins and cellos and, and also uh, flutes and so on and so forth. So um, as far as it comes to the parts, you know, in some songs, the parts are already written, for example. Um, in Pillars of Creation, I already had like the, the violin parts ready and I already knew what I wanted them to sound like and be. So the violinist came in and he literally go over it and you know actually executed it while in other places like uh for the flute for example in songs like uh in like seven you know it actually had like some sort of a flute solo and this solo wasn't really supposed to be there you know it was really like on the spot that our violinist uh the the one we took the flutist uh that we took for the song daniel sassi she was like oh wow i think the solo can be very nice there and then she tried and started to play something and Boom, it sounded very, very nice. So, uh, yeah, so sometimes sometimes you have this kind of uh, point where you give them some sort of freedom, you know. Also in the other uh, points, like if they have some sort of a lead 
or something like with the with the saxophone though we knew exactly where we wanted it to be so it was a, a bit easier do you guys do you think that's something that's going to continue with the band if you have uh, of your ongoing projects and things like you're gonna want to keep bringing in other instruments more guests and like letting moments like in that happen in the studio um i think so this is definitely something we 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 think about in a very positive way um but you know as i said earlier like first and foremost it's what we feel the song requires i mean we won't try to harass it or we won't try to just put it in because we think it's cool or we want to sound uh complex or something you like if we'll feel there is a room for it to come and for the vibe the vibe that this that this instrument or that instrument can provide then it's definitely something we'd like to do one thing I can tell you is we want to experiment with more sounds in our next release and we want to really, you know, um, get a bit more sound from different types of like uh, instruments or not necessarily instruments, but things that can provide different kind of uh, sounds that we can incorporate in the music. So, yeah. And as far as like uh, conceptual visions or anything like that, is is there ongoing projects that you guys are throwing around right now that you're working on? Inside of Obsidian Tide? No, uh, inside of Obsidian Tide or outside. Oh, um, inside we actually work um, on the new album. I can tell you we have um, three songs already. You know, three back Ooh. songs for the night. Yeah, yeah. One of them we <laughs> played live. <laughs> no way. That must yeah. have been really satisfying. It was. It was. The reaction of the audience was very, very cool as well. It was very nice. But um, yeah, you know, we have three songs currently. We have another one in the oven. We actually trying to mess around. And um, we aim to just continue when this entire situation will pass and we'll be able to get back to rehearse properly and stuff. Uh, as far as it comes to concepts, to be honest, I mean, the next release... At the moment, it seems like it wouldn't be a concept album, but, you know, we we like to just go with the flow. We, we, we like to just go with how it feels, and, and if we'll see some things connect, then it might actually work. Awesome. Yeah. I, I just got a couple other questions I wanted to throw by you. Uh, sure. So for uh, Pillars of Creation, you guys went into the studio with Jamie King. Which yeah. I thought was interesting. So, what did you guys? Was that like a choice in your mind, or did that just kind of end up happening? Or, um, to be honest, it all started as far as it comes to Jamie and Jamie's involvement back when we released the EP. He actually oh. did the mastering. He did the mastering for the pre EP in two thousand and fifteen, and we knew Jamie from the internet, and of course from between the buried and me. We really, really liked the band, as I mentioned. And right. one day Ares actually thought about approaching him, you know, Ares our drummer, and he sent him an email. And we started to delve about the idea. And what actually happened is that we decided to give him also um, the privilege to master, or not only master, but also mix the album. And that's how eventually we happened to get involved with him. And um, we we're very happy with the result, to be honest. Well, of course, it's Jamie King. He's he's a legend. He is. He is. I totally, totally agree. In our, in our kind of world, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I like other stuff as well. I'm much into, into like, you know, the Contortionist, for example. And I think he did an amazing, amazing job with their material as well. So the decision was quite easy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to also ask you, what other hobbies do you guys all have in the band? What kind of things are you guys into? Well, um, I basically, I, I really like football. You know, football starts uh, to watch and to see yeah, football. I think you call it soccer up there? or Yes. Or, <laughs> all righty. So, yeah, soccer, not American yeah. football. So I really like uh, <laughs> soccer. Um, I like beer, you know, like drinking beer and getting to know about oh, then you, 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 you're going to have to come to Penticton uh, in the future then someday, because we, we got it all here as far as beer. 
<laughs> I'm Melbourne, like literally. I'm I'm definitely down to, to to come to Canada one day to perform or even just to hike and venture. I know, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I can tell you that uh, Shahar is very much into um, fantasy. You know, he likes D and D, and he likes also uh, a game, a card game, we which actually got us together, me and him. It's called Magic: The Gathering. I think you heard about it. So okay, yeah. Alrighty, so yeah, I mean, he really loves this game, and I used to play it a lot, and that's how I got to know him. Um, Erez is also very much into beer. He brew beer from time to time. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we try to we try to just do what we love along the way with the music, because, you know, what, what, what's the point in life if you can't really enjoy it? you know, even on other things, so. Yeah, absolutely. And that brings me to my next question is, it just anything that you'd want to put out there as advice or inspiration to any aspiring artists, whether it be musicians or painters or anything like that, is there something that you would say to them? Well, the first thing would be never to stop believing yourself. You know, I mean, this this entire thing can be very frustrating from time to time, whether it's because you can't really afford moving the next level as far as it comes to gear, or whether you can't really see yourself moving forward because you don't really have the right people next to you or anything you like. So the first thing would be never stop to believe yourself and, and work because work on it. It's, it's, it's not like something that you work and then you stop and then boom, it's, it's all amazing. It's, it's a constant battle. You know, I mean, I, I literally playing guitar 16 years now and I started playing only like classical guitar because I couldn't afford an electric guitar for a lot of time. And, you know, I just told myself, fine, I'll get it. It, it will be okay. I'll continue to write songs with what I have. And then when I got it, I said to myself, okay, the next thing I want to do is this and that. So it really is important not to stop believing in yourself, work very, very hard, and also also pay close attention about the people around you, the people you actually involve yourself with, because it's a hit or a miss. So that's the best thing I can say. I think that was a really good way of putting it. All right. Thanks. <laughs> uh, uh, is there anything else that you wanted to say to our listeners? Um, yes, I mean, we work hard. Uh, we work very, very hard on the album as well. It took us a lot, a lot of time and effort. If you really, if you love the music, I mean, the best way, this is what I do, this is what the other guys in the band do. They just talk about the music and pass it forward to their friends and they talk about the music and recommend it. Um, we work very hard. It would be amazing, you know, to, to see what you see, what you have to say about the music. And obviously, if you push it, you pull it, I mean, pass it forward. <laughs> And uh, that's pretty much it. We we are about to play in uh, the Netherlands festival called Prog Power Fest in October. Hopefully, fingers crossed, nothing will happen and it will still be okay and active as it's now. But I don't know. We need to see what will happen with the world. So we play there and uh, that's pretty much it. And where's the best place for people to follow up on what's happening in your world? Is there a good website or Facebook? We're pretty much everywhere. Um, as far as it comes to listening, whatever platform you like, whether it's Spotify, uh, YouTube, Bandcamp, uh, Apple Music, Tidal. Uh, we have, of course, a Facebook page. That's where we actually uh, you know, put out everything about the band, uh, all the news. Um, and yeah, on whatever you, you're okay with, whatever you like to listen to music through. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. This is my interview with Oz Avnea from the band Obsidian Tide from Tel Aviv, Israel. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, Oz. Uh, again, thank you, man. Thank you, Derek, for having me and find the time to talk to me. It was a pleasure for me. Of course, it was a huge pleasure for me, too. So hopefully we can do it again in the future. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> man. Would love to. Awesome. Great. Take care, eh? Ah, uh, For sure. You too, man. Stay safe.